This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hello friends, uh, this is Dr. Deepak Meghur and I'm here today with yet another interesting case. This is a case of an elderly maid who has got an intumescent cataract along with shallow anterior chamber, pseudo exfoliation and a rigid pupil. A couple of challenges to deal with in this patient, a tense capsule, a small pupil and a possibility of zonular weakness. For pupil, my plan is to just perform a stretch pupilloplasty and see how things go. If that does not work, then I plan to use the BHEX ring for pupil expansion. So I begin my surgery by staining the anterior capsule with Trepan Blue. Then I'm using the soft shell technique. First dispersive OVD goes in followed by cohesive OVD underneath it. And also putting the OVD a little bit behind the pupil to create some space so that the Kuglen hook which I'm using to for stretching the pupil does not damage the entry capsule. The two hooks engage the pupillary margin and they're moved away in diagonally opposite direction towards the periphery. This will result in micro tears which is responsible for the eventual pupillary expansion. I'm going to restain the capsule a little bit because the peripheral capsule is not stained that well. I'm aware that I'm dealing with a swollen cataract and as soon as I puncture the capsule, I go back to my forceps to perform the initial small rexus here. So as soon as I'm trying to perform, I can see that the rexus is hinting at running away because of the raised intralenticular pressure. At this moment, I stop, I re-grasp and lay the capsule flat, unfold it and change my direction of pulling. That is, I am pulling now towards the center of the eye in a centripetal manner. Uh, this is something like the pull-in manure or the Dr. Brian Little's manure. I am able to pull back the excess margin and prevent it from running radial. Chamber is shallowing, I inject a little bit of OVD again. And I changed my angle of attack. I want to go back uh, using a micro forceps but through the side port because it's much more comfortable and easily accessible. Once the primary rexis is performed, it's a time to decompress the capsule bag. Uh, and in this case, I'm using by manual irrigation aspiration to do the same. Once the interlenticular pressure is totally re released, I am performing a secondary larger rexus. I use the scissors to give a tangential cut to the rexus margin and then I am enlarging it to the appropriate size using a forceps. Now moving on to the phaco emulsification of the nucleus, I am using a direct chop technique. The phaco tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus in the central pupillary zone and then using the sharp chopper. I place it in front of the phaco tip and score the nucleus vertically down at the same time pulling my phaco tip with the nucleus slightly up. This ensures the first crack and then I am uh, laterally separating the fragments. This process of vertical chopping is continued uh, until we get around 6 fragments. And once the individual fragments are chopped, I don't phaco them immediately. I want to be there in the bag so that they can form the bag and support it. This technique is especially uh, useful when you are dealing with a uh, mature cataract where the bag becomes empty as soon as the fragments are aspirated because of the lack of epinucleus or cortex. So once we have all the fragments chopped in, now is the time to emulsify each of them. I hold each of the fragment into the pupillary plane and then emulsify using the appropriate uh, phaco power. As the last fragment is emulsified, I am surprised a little bit to find out that there is no red glow. Instead, I found out that there is a blue glow in this patient. Well, the obvious reason is that the trepan blue has found its way into the vitreous cavity through the loose zonules. This reminds us of the fact that the barrier between the anterior segment and the posterior segment 
which we so religiously try to protect is in fact more in our minds than it is factually at least in such cases this phenomenon of fluid traversing across the zonules into the vitreous cavity is not common but can occasionally be seen in such eyes with zonular weakness after inflating the bag i am implanting the ctr to provide equatorial support then a multipiece hydrophobic iol is placed in the capsular bag ovd is removed and the wounds are hydrated when the blue dye gets absorbed in a couple of days and the patient will not have any difficulty with the visual recovery so nothing to worry about in this case with the blue fundal glow is a reminder of the fact that how in some eyes with generalized zonular weakness fluids can traverse across the zonules thank you for your attention and hope this helps